Uh, hi everyone. I uh, so I'm I'm Eric Skull. I'm here with with uh, my colleague Matt Mallon, and I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the croakiness of my voice right now. I've been wrestling a thing all week, and I'm uh, it's better now than it was earlier. But I'm still uh, I'm glad that we're actually uh, had planned for Matt to do most of the talking today anyway. So uh, I'm uh, I'm glad of that because I'm I'm uh, I'm sure I'd lose my voice by the end of uh, 45 minutes. But um, anyway, so I, again, I'm Eric Skull, and I am uh, uh, the manager of the e-learning development group within e-learning design and services at Indiana University. And we're here to talk about a, a tool at, that's uh, become very widely used at IU. It's a custom tool that was developed uh, by our shop <clears throat> um, that is called Quick Check. And it's, uh, it's an embedded kind of low stakes formative assessment tool uh, that is uh, an LTI tool that is deployed in our uh, all across our Canvas instance. So my main job really on, here on this first slide is to introduce Matt. Uh, Matt Mallon is uh, is the the, the uh, architect and lead developer, kind of the the, um, the the master of all things Quick Check. He's he's really uh, responsible for for uh, what it's grown to be at IU as uh, a fantastic web developer, rock star developer. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else I need to do other than to uh, turn it over to Matt and uh, let him take it away. All right, sounds good. Hey everybody, I'm Matt Mallon. Uh, I can be talking to you about everything Quick Check today. So as far as the pedagogy goes, um, for sure, when we're building a tool at IU, it's not something that we step into lightly. We're not going to be um, just building things willy nilly. You wanna make sure that there is some solid pedagogy behind it. And I'm just a lowly developer. I'm not an instructional designer or technologist or researcher, but this is a tool that we built in collaboration with those folks. And they definitely guided a lot of the development in terms of what we were building. So hopefully I don't bungle this. Hopefully I do it justice in terms of describing these concepts pedagogically. But a lot of people, when they think of assessment, they think of summative assessment. They think of these big high stakes midterm final sort of situations, the things that kind of get your blood pressure up. And summative assessment, it is assessing students on what they've already learned. Whereas formative assessment, it is the opposite of that. It is helping students learn the material through the process of answering questions and interacting with course material. So formative assessment and summative assessment are not at odds with each other. They're complementary. You don't really want to replace one with the other. If you just had formative assessment and no summative assessment, that wouldn't really be a great course either. But a lot of instructors, they are familiar with summative assessment with these big high stakes things and formative assessment might be a little newer to them. So we found as we've been rolling out quick check and introducing it to faculty members at IU, what we're, there, what we're instructing them about, it's not just this tool specifically, but also this concept of formative assessment in general, which isn't as broadly used, but has been really, really helpful for improving student learning. So formative assessment by its nature is frequent and low stakes. Unlike that big midterm final that only happens once or twice a semester, formative assessment should be happening very frequently throughout the semester. It's helping students engage with the content and learn about it. It should also be low stakes. So a lot of students, when they think of assessment, they think of that high stakes scenario. And there's this kind of perfectionistic attitude of I have to get everything right the first time. I can't retry it. Students aren't often able to learn from their mistakes when they bomb that midterm or final. And so with formative assessment, it is the opposite. Students are encouraged to make mistakes, to try the quick check again, to develop mastery. It's often through making mistakes that we learn the most. And so that's actively encouraged in this sort of environment. Formative assessment also creates multiple opportunities for feedback so that students know if they're on the right track and understanding the concepts and gives them a chance to self-assess of whether they are actually getting what's being taught in the course. So I don't know about you all, but I certainly I've been in the situation where I thought I understood a concept in a course <laughs> and then I got to that big high stakes test and I'm like, I did not understand that at all. And so quick check, it's something that should hopefully help that not happen. As I said, it's something that is, it's not opposed to summative assessment. The two go hand in hand. It helps students prepare for those higher stakes examinations. 
And as soon as a student answers a question, they're given feedback on whether it's correct or not. And they can get a better idea of whether they're actually understanding the course material. And there's also the scenario where, you know, you have like 10 chapters of a textbook that you're supposed to read and you don't really know well, <laughs> what am I being tested on? What's important from this? What does the instructor think is important? And so if there are questions being asked about certain pieces of the material, that's also helping point students in the direction of what's actually important and what they should be learning and focusing on. Formative assessment also helps instructors get to know students' work. So I'm gonna keep on harping on this big midterm final thing. <laughs> that's like what a lot of courses are structured like, unfortunately. But if you only have these two opportunities for students to get assessed, then that's not a lot of opportunities for instructors to get to know students' work either. So it's hard to know as an instructor, are students paying attention? Are they putting in the time and energy that they're supposed to be doing um, in order to get everything out of the course that I want them to be getting out of it? And I've seen just in the um, conference schedule in terms of all the presentations, there's a lot of presentations on data and analytics. And if you just have these two big tests in the semester, that's not a lot of opportunities for an instructor or anyone else who's looking at data and analytics to get data on student behavior. So something that's really interesting with formative assessment, if you are using it frequently throughout a course, then that's just more opportunities to get data about how students are engaging with the course material and if they're understanding it. And so there's, we'll get to this later in the presentation, but there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on with the data that instructors get from this and getting a window into how students are interacting with the course material. Formative assessment also deters cheating. So um, since it is low stakes, as opposed to that high stakes examination where students only get that one shot, students are more likely to cheat if they only get one shot. If it is this high stakes thing that's worth 30% of your grade, whereas with uh, formative assessment, the cheating is a lot less likely to happen. And another piece of this that's really important, it's not necessarily part of the core pedagogy of formative assessment, but just in terms of the type of tool that we were looking for, but that didn't really exist when we created QuickCheck in 2016, is that ideally formative assessment will be incentivized with grades. So just to be realistic, <laughs> students are a lot less likely to complete an activity if it's ungraded, if it's optional, and like I said, formative assessment should be low stakes. And so even if it's worth just two points, just two points, um, students are a lot more likely to do it and try and get that grade. And we were seeing as we were looking for a tool that could do this, um, seeing like flashcard sorts of tools that maybe could be used for formative assessment, but none of them were tied to the Canvas gradebook. None of them were using these sorts of uh, LTI integrations to give students grade students grades based on their work. So that was something that was definitely missing for us in terms of the landscape of tools. And then in terms of the Canvas ecosystem as a whole, obviously there's Canvas quizzes and you might be asking, well, why not use Canvas quizzes for this purpose? But we feel that Canvas quizzes is a lot more oriented toward that summative assessment piece. There is a, a completely separate page you access from the rest of the course content to start a Canvas quiz. There's this page that before you even start that's like a little bit intimidating and gets your blood pressure up a little bit like you're starting the quiz now are you ready and there's all the, these options in terms of um, time limitations and how many attempts you can make if you want to use lockdown browser and all those things they're great for summative assessment but not so much for formative assessment and a really big piece of this which i'll get to in a minute is making sure that the assessment and the course content are seamlessly integrated with each other and Canvas quizzes is something that's just totally separate. You can't really integrate the two very well. And so we saw the need for a tool here. Um, do you have anything else to add, Eric, or should I go on? That's, that sounds great. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so you all heard an earful about the pedagogy. <laughs> and um, before we build this tool, we were dragging our feet a little bit. We were a little reluctant. We were thinking, if we build a tool like this, will faculty actually use it? It takes a lot of time and energy to build a tool, to maintain it. Will faculty even understand the value and importance of formative assessment? And um, we released a minimum viable product and we did a limited pilot for releasing it more broadly. And the answer to that question of whether faculty will use it or not was a resounding yes, based on the usage and statistics. So, 
Since QuickCheck was started in 2016, there have been 8.2 million student attempts, 21 million question responses, 142,000 students have used the system, 17,000 quick checks have been created with 54,000 questions, and 8,000 courses have used the tool. So quick check has become a really integral part of online learning at IU. And what's really interesting too is that this isn't a tool that has had a lot of fanfare. It's not something that we've you know, plastered all over buses driving around campus or sent all these email blasts out. Um, it's not even visible in the left nav of Canvas when instructors create a new course. This is something that has really been spread through word of mouth, through instructional designers, through teaching center consultants, and also faculty talking with each other. So a lot of faculty have seen the use in this tool and just the numbers speak for themselves. This is something that is definitely missing from Canvas and something that has gotten a lot of use. So a really important part of this piece is that the assessment is integrated with the content. So on the right here, I have a screenshot of an assignment from a course. This is an external tool assignment. That's the way that we structure these quick checks. Um, in the assignment description, there, are, there is some text, there's video, all the content that students are needing to absorb. And at the bottom where it says building your schedule, that's the title of the quick check. So everything beneath there is the quick check. And as you can see here, it's really seamlessly integrated. It's kind of hard to tell where the course content ends and where the quick check begins. And um, that's definitely by design. It's been really interesting when we were piloting this, we were surveying students and asking, hey, you use this tool quick check. What do you think of it? Was it useful for your learning? And a lot of them said, I didn't use a tool called quick check. What are you talking about? <laughs> and so that's just how seamless it is. Students think that it's a part of Canvas. And as far as something being low stakes, this is what we're going for. We don't want that separate page that says, you're starting a quiz, you need to be worried. It's just very informal and low stakes. And really the advantage here is that students, they're actively learning the material at this point. They're not super familiar with it. So if a student gets to a question and they're not really sure about the answer, they're encouraged to look back at the material and find the answer and then answer the question. So. If you're taking a quiz that was on a separate page, and let's say you're taking a quiz that's based on, you know, this module with 10 different pages, and you have to have 10 different tabs open just to find the answer that you're looking for, that's not very good for usability. So having it integrated in this way also reduces cognitive load so that students can focus on their learning. Another really cool aspect of this is that students can use QuickCheck as an active study tool. So the way that we encourage instructors to set up QuickCheck assignments is they can attach a due date if they would like to, but keep the assignment open. Don't set a close date for the assignment. So students can return after the due date and use QuickCheck as a study tool. They can review the content that's in the assignment description and they can answer questions instead of just having to pour over their textbook a million times. And it's, it's more active. And also, as I'll get to later, it provides the instructor with some data about how students are studying and what their habits are. Another important concept with Quick Check is the idea of developing mastery. So this is the idea here that low stakes is good for learning. It's okay to make mistakes and to learn from those. And uh, once again, as a learner, another situation I've been in is that I, I take a quiz and there's you know, like 30 questions in it and I'm feeling confident, I get to the end, I click that submit button and then I got like half of it wrong because I wasn't understanding something. And that can be really demoralizing as a student and feel like a waste of time and energy. Whereas if I would have known from question one that I wasn't getting something that could have saved me a lot of time and energy and I could have focused on learning. So with Quick Check, students get instantaneous feedback after each question. You can see here on the screenshot, this is just basic correct incorrect feedback, but an instructor can also add custom feedback based on specific options. And another thing that is helpful here, it's not just the instantaneous feedback, but the idea that if a student gets it wrong, they can try again. So we're really encouraging students to try again and to give them unlimited attempts and retries. So there's a start over button at the bottom of a quick check. And then when they complete the quick check on the completion screen, there's a button as well to restart it. And so this is something that when we have introduced this tool to faculty members, faculty have kind of struggled with this concept the most. They have been really like, well, can I just limit it to like five attempts? Like if, if I don't limit attempts, how will students take this seriously? 
And um, what we've had to tell them is that it's okay. <laughs> Students are learning the material. If it takes them 10 retries to have to learn this material, then that's a good thing and that's what they need. But obviously what we don't want happening is just blind guessing. We don't want students to just be randomly selection, selecting options, restarting a million times, and not really absorbing the material. So in order to uh, make sure that this fear was addressed, we did roll out a feature a few years ago, this timeout feature. Um, we ran a study on this where what we found was if students made more than two attempts in a minute, they were likely gaming the system. And if you think about it, like that's not taking th more than th three attempts in the span of a minute, that's about 20 seconds per attempt. That's not a lot of time to read a question, understand it, read all the options, answer it, think through your answer. It's clear that there's not a lot of thought going on there. And so we found in the study, um, students were split into two groups. There's a control group, and then students were given a timeout of two minutes if they reached this threshold of more than two attempts in a minute. And students who were given a timeout, they were um, less likely to engage in this cheating behavior afterward, and it was an effective deterrent. So that is something that we have kept in the system. So really quickly, I'd like to run over the question types of quick check, um, just so you can see visually what the system looks like for a student. We have multiple choice questions. I know amazing technology, you would never suspect it, but obviously a, a very frequent question type. Multiple corrects, so students can select multiple check boxes here. We have matching questions, and you can see at the top there are these blue boxes, so those are the remaining options. Whenever a student selects an option, it's grayed out from that list above, so that way they can more easily see what options are remaining and just kind of reduces cognitive load and makes it easier for them to focus on the question. We also have a matrix question type. So this one is not present in Canvas quizzes, but if you've used Qualtrics at all, you've probably seen something like this. So Basically, students are being asked to categorize options in the different categories here. The, the columns here are the, uh, the categories. We also have text match questions, aka fill in the blank. And we call it this text match because we do have some functionality here where um, capitalization, punctuation, and trailing white space is all stripped out. So we're making sure that if a student accidentally adds like a period or an extra space at the end of their answer, it's still regarded as correct. Otherwise, it could be a rather frustrating experience. We also have multiple drop downs. You're probably familiar with this one from Canvas as well. Numerical questions, and we do have the option here for an exact answer, an answer in a range, and also a margin of error. And so this drag and drop question is a new one that's currently in pilot. It's an active area of development. We haven't rolled it out to production yet. And it's an interesting one because you don't see drag and drop questions very often, yet it's something that since the very early days of Quick Check, faculty have been asking for this. And we always kind of turn them away because Whenever we get a use case for a drag and drop question, it always seems to be just a variation on matching. So we'll get something like, oh, I'd like to a student to drag a term onto its definition. And that's something that you could really easily create as a matching question. And we've hesitated to do it as a drag and drop because there's not really any research to support the idea that a drag and drop is in any way superior to something like a matching question for student learning or usability. And then also a drag and drop presents some accessibility issues. And just in terms of development, it's a lot more to, to develop and maintain. And it's just a lot more complicated to, to build as well as an instructor. So for a long time, we hesitated on building this question type, but we got a really interesting use case this past year from an organic chemistry professor. And he said that students are often asked to recall the structure of these organic chemistry molecules just from memory. So they'll be given like a carbon ring and on a piece of paper, they are drawing these branches off the carbon ring to recreate a certain molecule. Then they have to upload it and the instructor has to grade it. The whole process is a bit of a pain for both students and instructors. It's all very manual. It's not digital or automated in any way. And this is something that 
we saw some value in, in terms of creating a question type where it's, this isn't something that would really work as a matching question. It would be really clunky and difficult to use if usable at all. Whereas for a drag and drop, it's something that um, students are being asked to create something. It's very different from just your standard question. And it's more visually and spatially oriented. And it's just a, a different paradigm than what's out there. So we thought this would be really interesting. Organic chemistry is something that certainly is used across a lot of different courses and departments. And even outside of the specific subject, there could be some really interesting use cases. So this is something that um, is an active development, as I mentioned, and we're still considering some of those accessibility concerns, um, as I mentioned earlier, before we roll it out to production. So data, we have a lot of it in Quick Check. I imagine some people out there might be some data nerds and you will love Quick Check if that's the case. We give you pretty much everything as an instructor. So here, this is the view that an instructor sees when they're looking at student attempts. You can see every single attempt that a student has made on a Quick Check. There's information on how many questions were answered, what was correct and incorrect, the score, if a student completed it, when they started, how much time they spent. There's also an indication of whether they completed it before the due date for a grade or after the due date and used it as a study tool. And it's also integrated with the Canvas gradebook, so instructors can view and edit grades as well. There's data on student responses, so you can see how students answered each individual question. There is analytics on each quick check. So you can see here, this is how all the students in the course performed on a specific quick check. You can see things such as the number of attempts made, the median score, the average amount of time spent. And then for each question, you can see how students answered that question and how many got it correct. And then this is something a little different. This is analytics on a specific student, and this is across the course as a whole. This isn't just one quick check. Obviously, this student did not make 597 attempts on one quick check. This is <laughs> across the course. So there's some tidbits here about the attempts made and questions answered, but really the part of the bottom in terms of time spent is probably going to be a little more useful for instructors. So an instructor can see how much time a student is spending with quick check before the due date and after the due date in terms of studying and then also how long before the due date on average the student is starting a quick check so if that number is 20 minutes before the due date that paints a picture that's all i'm saying it paints a picture <laughs> and as an instructor um, what i've heard multiple instructors say is that this can be really useful when a student comes in for office hours and they're asking how can i improve in this course i'm not getting a great grade what can i do and they can look at this dashboard and see how much time students are spending studying the material before um, those higher stakes summative assessments. There's also some custom data exports. So you can export CSVs in terms of um, student attempts and responses. So if you are a true, true data nerd and you are running research or analytics and you wanna see how students responded to individual quick checks and things of that nature, um, you can export the data and run your own custom analysis. And then also caliper attempt data is sent to the UDP. So as far as how quick check looks for an instructor and their interface, uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. As you can imagine, if an instructor is using quick check as intended, they're using it frequently throughout their course, they're using it in multiple courses potentially, they could have like hundreds of quick checks. And you could imagine it would be a really big mess if you just had this list of 300 quick checks in front of you. And if you need to edit something, how do you find that? So organization was really important to us. And the term that we use in quick check is that you have a set of quick checks. Um, not the most common term, but we didn't want to use the word course. In most cases, when you're creating a set of quick checks, it's probably going to correlate to a course, but not always. We wanted to make sure that the tool was flexible for multiple use cases. So it's possible that um, multiple instructors might be collaborating on a set of quick checks and using it across multiple courses. Or if you're an instructor teaching like a 100 level course and a 200 level course, 
maybe you want to reuse those introductory quick checks in your more advanced course to make sure that students are understanding the material before moving on to more advanced concepts. So we just didn't want instructors to get the idea that if I create a quick check, I can only use it in this one course. Instead, quick checks are following your username as opposed to a specific course. So wherever you're an instructor, you can embed any quick check that you've created. There's that flexibility built into it. Um, so at the bottom here, you can see um, just a quick screenshot. This is just a small portion of the home screen that an instructor would see. These are um, sets where they are a member. And on the right is what you would see if you click that go to set button. This is what you would see there. So uh, at the bottom, there are some quick checks. You can edit, uh, add, delete, or preview a quick check. And then also um, toward the top where it says show users in the set. So you can add other users as well. You can invite people if um, if you're a faculty member and you're collaborating with an instructional designer, they can be invited to the set and collaborate on creating quick checks with you. You can also add people as read-only members if you don't want them adding or editing um, any of the quick checks. Um, also in terms of sharing, we have QTI import and export. So um, we focus this primarily around Canvas since that's what our faculty members are generally using. And this is an important one, just in terms of tools in general and our philosophy at IU is that we wanna make sure there's always an exit strategy with a tool because faculty are gonna be a lot more reluctant to use a tool if let's say they spend hours and hours and hours of their time building content and making quizzes. And then if a tool goes away, if it gets retired for some reason and they can't export that content back out and reuse it, then that's just kind of time wasted for them. And so when they approach a new tool, they might ask like, well, why should I use this tool if I might spend all this time on it? And then it just goes away. And so that was really important to us. We wanted to make sure that that functionality was there. So it goes both ways. If an instructor um, has created quick checks, they can export them from quick check and then import them into Canvas. And you know, quick check, at least right now, it's not going anywhere, but who's to say you know, in 10 or even 20 years, like what the case may be, um, in that case, instructors could export QTI and import it into a different platform. And also, if instructors have existing assessments and quizzes in Canvas, they can export from Canvas and import into QuickCheck to also save them some time. So another feature in QuickCheck, because there are always more features, <laughs> and there's, there's a lot in this little tool, we have custom activities. So. On the web team, we are often building custom activities using you know, various JavaScript libraries and such um, for individual courses. So right here, you can see a screenshot of an activity from a recording arts course. Students are being asked to drag and drop these probes around and move around these wires in order to learn the basics of reading voltage and just like how circuitry and current works. And so this is something that obviously would not work very well. <laughs> it's like a basic multiple choice question. We built this using a JavaScript library. We wanted to make sure that these sorts of custom activities could also integrate with QuickCheck. So um, there is a QuickCheck API that these custom activities can leverage. So student attempts and responses are recorded in the system. An instructor would be able to see student data the same way they would with a normal quick check. And then also grades are integrated with the Canvas gradebook, um, just like any other quick check as well. So also a, a pretty neat thing we're able to integrate here. As far as interoperability goes, quick check is using LTI 1.1 at the moment. Um, 1.3 is ready. We have it built. We're just waiting to put in production and iron out a few things. As far as overall like LTI compatibility, um, right now it is only compatible with Canvas as opposed to other LMSs. Um, we are reliant on the Canvas API for a few pieces of data that's not available through a strict LTI integration. So right now, only in Canvas, but if the LTI spec changes in the future, it could potentially be available elsewhere. QuickCheck is also open source and it's on GitHub. So we have a link here if you're interested in checking it out. Um, that code is out there and under an open source license if you'd like to use it. Um, QuickCheck is running on a LAMP stack and we're using Laravel and PHP on the back end and Angular on the front end. And it also comes with a Docker file. So if you're running a containerized infrastructure, it should be a breeze to set up. 
And I'm sure some people might be wondering what we're doing for our infrastructure. Um, obviously, you could run it on um, just a plain LAMP stack if you're not doing the whole container thing or Docker through some other infrastructure. But just for us, if you're curious, we are using AWS Fargate. So this is nothing official. Please do not like quote me on this and like sing it from the rooftops. But something that we are at least considering as a possibility is collaborating with Unison and making Quick Check available to all Unison institutions. If there's interest in it, we really don't know um, if people would be interested. We're trying to figure that out at this point and what that would look like. But what we're at least considering as an option is essentially hosting Quick Check through a multi tenant architecture at IU and using our AWS instance um, and making the tool available as an LCI tool to other Unison institutions. So um, obviously this is not a thing yet, but if you are interested in it, we are just trying to figure out if people would be interested in this option. So please reach out to the folks at Unison or to our email address if you would like to use Quick Check. It just would be good for us to know moving forward if we should be spending time on this. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I've got. Do you have anything else, Eric? No, that, man, uh, I hadn't seen that talk. Yeah, so that was, I was, <laughs> I was like, that was great. You did a fine job. Well, uh, no, I, I say, think. Sorry if I was talking fast, trying to fit it all in. <laughs> oh, it's, I mean, gosh, there's a, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of things that I actually haven't thought about with Quick Check in, in a while too, to be honest. So no, I thought it was, it was good. Um, yeah, and on the, I mean, just that, that notion of, uh, of, uh, you know, a, a possible unison, uh, you know, partnership there you're just trying to figure out what, how, how that fits in and what the plans are uh, Priscilla had asked that that question quite a while back and I was waiting till we got to this slide um, but yeah I think I'm, we're like exactly like Matt said we're just trying to figure that out what, what that might look like uh, um, and I've been encouraged by kind of uh, by our leadership to explore uh, what, what that could potentially look like so uh, so yeah please do I'll just I'll just echo what Matt said if, if you if you are interested to, to reach out to uh, to either Unison or the, our email address there, elearn at iu.edu, and that'll that'll come to our team, and we can, uh, or well, it'll come to our broader team, and we can we can uh, uh, have a conversation with you. So, yeah, that's great. I'm not sure if there's any. I, I thought, yeah, if there's if there's questions, happy to to field those. I don't know that I've got anything else to add, Matt. That was great. Cool. Yeah, that went a lot faster than all of my practice runs. So hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> just like going a mile a minute. <laughs> but we'll we'll hang Have out. Have you a couple seen minutes here. the H H five P H product? Yeah, I mean that's something that certainly has come up at our institution. Um, and yeah, we haven't. It's something that's been considered for a while, but it's interesting. I mean, there's pros and cons to it. I don't want to like bash H5P or anything. There's a lot of great stuff there, but at the same time, some people who have used it also like don't really like the interface or they find it confusing because there's kind of a mix of assessment and then also presentational um, things in there as well. And it's kind of an ongoing area for us about whether um, H5P will be a thing at our institution or not. We're still figuring that out. Yeah. I mean, with this app, I think, you don't need the other one, but for the rest of us who don't have something as awesome as Quick Check, <laughs> um, you know, we we get requests for those kinds of tools, and you know, there's only so many things we can do at one time. Um, but I will send you an email. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Yeah, and there's definitely like features in H5P, like branching questions and things like that that aren't in Quick Check. And oh, I think one of the advantages, oh, sorry, go ahead. Always, everyone always wants the branching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something, I mean, we're still developing this tool and it's certainly a question type we're considering. Um, but I think one of the advantages to this tool is that it is rather simplistic compared to something like H5P where you do get that whole kitchen sink and then you're like, oh my God, like I want, I know when I look at it, I'm like, I don't even know what half these things are, <laughs> you know, and maybe in time and with training, like that would get better. But I think the simplicity of this tool is like a bonus. Mm -hmm. that Will, do you have like, you know, with the numerical type questions, can it, is it built upon the same like Canvas engine where you can just put a range of numbers for this and that and it built, you know, like, like in, in the feature of like 
question banking because if you have hundreds of students in a class like especially you know some of the introductory classes to help like with academic integrity is there banking involved um so you mean like a question bank yes so that's kind of the way it's set up just like um foundationally with those quick check sets like a set is kind of like a question bank um and that uh, it can be used in multiple courses or by multiple instructors does that make sense Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, and yeah, with numeric, we do offer a range um, as an option. And we have like math jacks in there as well for adding and editing equations. And this, I am assuming, is, is similar to the Sakai tool, um, since you guys used to be a Sakai school. Uh, that is, um, I, I don't remember the name of the tool for Sakai where it, you can embed questions and like little mini discussions on a page so that you don't have to go to a different tool or a different content item. It's all like seamless on the page with the content. I'm not sure. I, I was, I was, Matt, I think Matt was, uh, I'm not sure you were at IU during the on course days. Uh, um, and I'm trying to think back. Um, to what that tool might be, but I'm actually not, I'm not hundred percent sure. I mean, it, what you, the way you just described it though is correct. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, designed to be embedded uh, as an LTI, as part of an LTI assignment embedded as, as Matt showed at the bottom of the page, but um, and integrated in that way. Any other, any other questions or I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to underline, but I think Matt, I think you covered it well. All right, I guess we can, uh, I guess we can call it, huh? I mean, unless yeah. well, we can, Matt and I can, can hang out if you do have, uh, yeah. uh, if you do, uh, have any any uh, questions but uh, other than that yeah just feel free to send us an email if you have questions mm -hmm. yeah thank you everybody appreciate you listening I guess we're good to go. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're I think it's down to just us again. So y'all did a great job. Thank you. Really yeah, Matt. Nice yeah, you job. had a you had yeah. at the most I saw was I think you had like 55 people. So you did nice. good. Good. Yeah, this was a little yeah. different from other um other sessions in the conference, uh, a little more tool specific. Yeah. Hey, you guys did great. All right. Well. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks.